Welcome to the Deep Dive. Today, we're uh, getting straight into a topic that's really shaped global health for decades, HIV. But there's this renewed buzz, the sense of optimism. Our mission today is to unpack the, well, the significant advancements and this real feeling of hope in the fight against HIV. We've been looking through some really fascinating sources, especially findings highlighted in what's being called HIV Cure 2025, breakthroughs and hope. It really is quite a moment. For so long, um, the main conversation was about managing the virus. Crucial prevention work, of course. Right, absolutely vital. But the idea of an actual cure, that mm -hmm. often felt, you know, almost theoretical, way off in the distance. Mm -hmm. What makes 2025 feel different and what these reports are pointing to isn't just one thing. It's this this wave of progress on multiple fronts. Okay. We're talking cutting edge genetics, um, but also really practical prevention tools that are making a difference right now. That feels like a really significant shift. So that leads us to the big question for this deep dive. Are we actually closer to an HIV cure? We're going to dig into what the sources say and importantly, what it all means for you. Okay, let's just tackle the big one head on. Everyone wants to know, is there a universal cure for HIV yet? What's the latest? Right. So based on everything we've looked at, the straightforward answer is no. There isn't a single universally available cure right now. Okay. But, and this is a really important but, while it's not a universal cure in that absolute sense, like wiping it out completely for everyone, mm -hmm. the progress has been genuinely groundbreaking. Mm -hmm. What's emerging in 2025, according to these reports, is very real hope. The key thing to understand is the difference between a cure and uh, long-term remission. Explain that a bit more, cure versus remission. Sure. So remission means the virus is suppressed down to undetectable levels, but without needing those daily medications. That's the goal for many of these new strategies. Right. Undetectable without the daily pills. Exactly. And some approaches are even aiming for what we call a functional cure, effectively achieving that long-term remission state. So no universal cure yet, but definitely pushing towards remission and functional cures. That distinction is really helpful. So. Thinking about how that actually changes things for someone living with HIV compared to just a few years ago, what does that look like? It's a huge leap. A few years back, it was all about the daily pill regimen. Effective, but constant. Yeah, that daily reminder. Exactly. Now, long-term remission. We're talking potentially years where the virus stays undetectable without daily meds. That's massive for quality of life, for reducing stigma. Absolutely, it frees people up. Totally transformative. So yeah, the source material lays out several really innovative strategies that are being explored right now to get us there. Okay, let's get into those. One of the most fascinating things highlighted was this approach tackling HIV's hiding trick, the dormant cells. It uses something we're all kind of familiar with now thanks to COVID vaccines, mRNA technology. They're calling it the shock and kill mRNA strategy. How does that work? How does it flush out the hidden virus? Yeah, it's really compelling how they're adapting that mRNA tech. The big problem with HIV, as you said, is latency. The virus hides out, dormant, inside the DNA of immune cells. Just lying low. Precisely. Invisible to the immune system, invisible to most drugs. That's why treatment is typically lifelong. Makes sense. But this research, published in June 2025 in Nature Communications by a team in Australia at the Peter Doherty Institute, it's pretty exciting. They've shown how mRNA delivered using these special lipid nanoparticles, they call them LNPX, can essentially wake up those sleeping HIV cells. Okay, wake them up. So how does it do that? Like, what's the actual process inside the cell? It's quite elegant, actually. It's a three-step idea. First, the mRNA gets delivered right into the target immune cells using these LNPX particles, like a targeted delivery. Okay. Step two, once inside, that mRNA gives instructions that basically triggers the dormant HIV to switch back on to become active. It forces it out of hiding. Exactly. And then step three, once the HIV is active and exposed, the hope is that either the person's own immune system or maybe future drugs designed for this can then find and eliminate those infected cells. Ah, okay. So you shock it awake and then kill it once it's visible. That's the concept. Draw it out of the shadows so it can be dealt with. Got it. And where does this stand now? The research says proven in the lab, but still needs animal and human trials. That's right. It's shown promise in lab settings, which is a crucial first step. But yes, there's still a way to go with animal studies and then eventually human clinical trials. So it's a long road, definitely, but a very exciting one. Okay, so that's one angle waking up the hidden virus. But another really revolutionary idea is about potentially eliminating it. Gene editing and stem cell therapy. People might remember the Berlin and London patients functionally cured through stem cell transplants. 
amazing stories. Truly remarkable cases. They showed it was possible. But as the sources point out, those transplants were risky, expensive, and not practical for everyone. So what's the next step towards something more accessible? Right, exactly. How do you get similar results without the high risks and complexity of those bone marrow transplants? That's where CRISPR gene editing tools are generating a lot of buzz. CRISPR, yeah. The reports specifically mention EBT-101 from a company called Excision Biotherapeutics. The idea here is incredibly ambitious, a potential one-time treatment. One time, wow. Yeah. Designed to literally go into infected cells and remove the HIV DNA, snip it out. So not just suppressing it, but actually editing it out of the cell's own genes. Precisely. Like finding the virus's code in the body's instruction manual and just deleting it. That sounds like science fiction, almost. And the update on EBT-101, where is that in development? It's moving forward. The reports say it has completed phase one safety trials, which is key, making sure it's safe to use in people. Okay, safety check. And now phase two trials are underway. Mm -hmm. They're looking at efficacy. Does it actually work? We're expecting initial results in early 2026. Early 2026. Mm. That's not too far off. The potential, if this works, yeah. a functional cure for millions, the sources suggest. What would that mean societally? Oh, it would be monumental. Just think about the impact on stigma, first off. Huge. And then the strain on healthcare systems, the economic costs, but mostly just the individual lives. Transforming HIV from something you manage forever into something that could actually be cured for many people, it's a different kind of hope altogether. Yeah, a profound difference. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's uh, shift gears a bit. Cure strategies are vital, but prevention is just as critical for controlling the epidemic globally. What are the sources saying about new prevention tools? Are there game changers there, too? Absolutely. And this is where we see advancements having a really immediate impact. The sources really highlight the FDA approval of Lena Capavir brand name yes to go for pre-P. Pre-P, so pre-exposure prophylaxis, preventing infection in the first place. Exactly. And Lena Capavir is being called a game changer for a couple of key reasons. First, it's simplicity. You know, standard pre-EP has typically been a daily pill. Right, which can be tough for adherence. Forgetting pills happens. It does. Lena Capavir, though, requires only two shots a year. Two shots a year? Yes, one injection every six months. And the efficacy in trials, over 99% protection against HIV. Wow. Greater than 99% protection with just two shots annually. That must be revolutionary for people who struggle with daily pills. Is that the main advantage highlighted? That's a huge part of it. That radical simplicity removes the whole adherence barrier. The research points out it's particularly beneficial for people at high risk of infection who struggle with daily pills. Makes total sense. Public health experts are calling it, and this is a quote, the most powerful prevention tool to date. Imagine the global impact, especially in places where daily access or follow-up is hard. Yeah, enormous potential. Yeah. But... There's always a but, isn't there? The sources mention a, a pretty significant catch. Ah, uh, yes. The price tag. $28,000 per year in the U.S.? That's speed. It is. And the reports note that advocates are, quite rightly, fighting hard for affordable access globally. It's that classic tension. Amazing science, but real-world herbals with cost and equity. A crucial fight. Yeah. Okay, so that's prevention. What about for people already living with HIV? Are there new developments in long-acting HIV treatments that move beyond daily pills. Yes, definitely. This is another area where we're seeing options that really improve quality of life. There's a lot of exciting work on combination therapies. For instance, pairing lenacapavir, that same drug used for pre-EP, with things called broadly neutralizing antibodies, or BNADs. Okay, combinations. What's the goal there? The main benefit, again, is simplifying the treatment. Moving away from daily pills to maybe just a few injections per year. Fewer injections than even the pre-PAP schedule. Potentially, yes. Depending on the specific combination and trial results, it drastically reduces the treatment burden. And results presented at a big conference, CROI 2025, looked really promising. We're talking viral suppression rates over 90%. That's excellent. Also, reduced drug resistance, which is always a concern with long-term treatment, and importantly, improved patient adherence because it's just easier. Makes sense. Easier schedule, better adherence, better outcome. Exactly. Now, these are still in trial phases, mind you, but the promise for simplifying long-term management is profound. It's about giving people back more of their daily lives. Okay, so we've covered a lot of ground. This shock-and-kill mRNA idea, CRISPR gene editing, potentially offering a one-time cure, linocapavir revolutionizing pre-P with six-month shots, and these long-acting treatments simplifying life for those living with HIV. 
It really feels like while that universal cure isn't quite here yet, 2025 is genuinely a landmark year in HIV science. There's a tangible sense of hope. There really is. And, you know, all this amazing science, these breakthroughs, they have the most impact when people take action now. Right. The science needs to connect with individuals. Exactly. And the research consistently circles back to the fundamental importance of early testing and detection. These advancements are powerful, but they work best when people know their status early. Couldn't agree more. Which brings us to a really direct call to action for you listening. Don't wait for symptoms. Don't guess. Get tested. Why is knowing your status right now more important than ever, given everything we've just talked about? Because it literally can save your life and protect others. That's what the reports emphasize. Knowing your status early means you can access these incredibly effective treatings we've discussed. You can get the virus suppressed to undetectable levels. Undetectable equals untransmittable. You exactly. You protect your own health dramatically and you prevent transmission to others. It's about taking control for yourself and for the community. And the sources mention a specific practical resource for taking that step? Yes. They point people towards visit HIVRNATestGuide.com. Okay. HIVRNATestGuide.com. What makes that resource helpful? Well, it addresses some common hurdles. It offers fast, affordable, and confidential HIV RNA testing. And the RNA test itself is key. It can detect HIV as early as 7 to 33 days after exposure. That's much earlier than older tests, right? Much earlier than traditional antibody tests, yes. So you get answers sooner, which allows for quicker action if needed. Plus, they provide access to a huge network, 4,500 plus HIV testing labs across the United States. So it's widely accessible. 4,500 labs. Yeah. That makes it convenient. Right making them a trusted source for HIV testing. And crucially, they use FDA-approved HIV tests so you know the results are reliable. Fast, confidential, early detection, wide access, reliable tests. Sounds like a solid resource. Your health is absolutely worth it. And as we've heard today, the future holds a lot of hope. So as we wrap up this deep dive, maybe something to think about is how quickly science can move. These breakthroughs we talked about today. Hmm. They're taking something once seen as insurmountable and turning it into, well, a manageable challenge and maybe, just maybe, edging towards a cure. What does this rapid change mean for how you approach health and prevention in your own life? Not just for HIV, but kind of across the board. It's definitely something to consider. It really underscores how dynamic science is. Things are constantly evolving, pushing boundaries. Staying informed isn't just about knowing facts, it's empowering. It lets you take an active role in your own health and well-being in a world that's changing fast. Well said. Thank you for joining us on this deep dive. Keep exploring, ask questions, and stay curious.